Hi guys, I'm Buck Weezer, putting the do into do-it-yourself. And our do-it-yourself project today is this cute little 22-inch yard machines snowblower, which, believe it or not, was put in the trash over a $5 repair part. It runs great and uh, hasn't seen a lot of use. My neighbor brought it over. His dad found it on the side of the road. Where do you see what uh, what it takes to get this back working again? So here it is, Yard Machines by MTD, 22 inch snowblower. Looks clean. The uh, skid shoes don't s seem to have worn very much. It doesn't look like it's been used very much. It's got a 5.5 horsepower Tecumseh motor. And uh, from what I understand, it starts and runs just fine. But the problem that we have is, you take a look here, we got this control cable flapping in the breeze and this one flapping in the breeze. See some uh, cable ties here that aren't doing much. and Some cable ties down here that aren't doing much and some duct tape here. So you've got two control cables one for the the auger that's that shoots the snow and the other for the the drive and what i notice here is a broken plastic component that's supposed to secure both of the control cables inside of it that's our five dollar plastic part that failed and the reason for which this snowblower in otherwise good condition was put into the garbage well i spent the five bucks plus a little bit for shipping and tax and we're ready to put this back together and i'll show you just how easy it is so here's the part right here this little guy and also the uh, part number if that can be of help to you It's just a plastic, a small plastic piece and the two cables fit inside there and it bolts to the frame of the snowblower. I should mention that this snowblower is, um, you see this on a lot of different makes and models, Yard Machines, MTD, uh, Troy Built, Craftsman. So this particular setup and part is not unique to a Yard Machines but there's just so many little snowblowers that have the exact same setup and part. All you really need to do to fix this is uh, only the only tools you need is a 7 16 wrench and a Phillips head screwdriver. So let's go put it put this new part on. Let's remove the old broken piece with the 7 16 wrench and a Phillips head screwdriver on this side. Like that, piece of cake. Now we got two cables. The one coming up the left controls the auger and we're going to put him, you can see how the cables slide right into there. And there's a groove in the top of the cable that it'll snap right into place. This other cable winds up from the other side that controls our drive wheels. He snaps in right there. Same deal. Adhere it to the post and then uh, <coughs> snug it down. And again, it's just plastic, so I don't want to over tighten it. Just, just till it's snug. Yeah, now we can connect our cables to the control arms. And both connect over here on the left side. And according to the decal on the arm, this one under here controls our wheels, which is this guy right here.
this one over here. This is for the auger. That one's working fine, but what I notice on the uh, what I notice on the uh, drive wheels is the cables pulled out and isn't retracting all the way. So I need to uh, see why that cable stuck. Might have to open it up underneath and check that out. But we do have the new plastic piece put on, and that feels pretty good. The one cable is working as it should, and the other one's still stuck in the out position, so I'll have to work on that, figure out what's going on there. Okay, so a quick peek underneath shows the uh, cable and spring for the drive mechanism had become disconnected. I don't actually see a problem, I just think when the cable was slack, it probably popped off, it just clips on there. Uh, like this Hard to do with one hand And then when I put on the uh, pull pull tight on the cable it stays it goes up into place So that's really all there is to why that one cable was off Okay, the addition of a couple of new cable ties and everything's back in place and Things are working as they should. You know, it's just kind of, in my opinion, a bad design that you make a part like that out of plastic, something that's going to take a lot of, uh, you know, because, you know, when you squeeze these handles, this thing's under some stress and pressure, and something a little more durable than plastic probably would have been nice. But it's working now, and, uh, Everything appears to be in order. I should fire it up and give it a try. Well, as you can see, that was a pretty easy fix, and this baby's back in business. Uh, the impeller's working, the drive wheels are working, and it was a $5 part. So no real need to put it in the trash. If you've got this problem, you can solve it real easily, as I did in just a few minutes. So thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you all on the next video. Bye-bye. Hey, here's a little bonus footage. I wanted to try something a little unconventional to kind of secure this and prevent and preclude the possibility of it breaking again since it's under so much stress. So I got some like JB weld type putty that turns rock hard and I just want to put it in here. Now I don't want it to go inside the cable sleeve so be careful about that. But I wanted to put something in here that could serve to make this connection a little more secure. Put that in there like that. And put it back together. And this stuff hardens in just a matter of hours. Rock hard. And I think that may serve a good purpose in securing this up a little bit. A little excess squeezing out, that's okay. And I also thought it might be worthwhile to put a couple of uh, cable ties on here. Again, to further strengthen what otherwise is, in my opinion, 
the weakest link, this cheap plastic part. All right, so I think that should work pretty good. Are those, are these extra steps necessary? Maybe not, but since it cracked one time, it might want to do that again. This might help it out a little bit. Just an idea. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, have a great day. And I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye-bye.